So today we're taking a look at a relic from the year 2007. This is the Samsung Q1 Ultra, a sub $1,000 ultra portable computer that runs Windows XP Tablet PC Edition. And this particular unit has been sealed in its box ever since it was manufactured. So let's change that. Sponsored by Akamai Connected Cloud. Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. So the Samsung Q1 line of devices comes to us from that weird period in the mid to late 2000s where computer manufacturers were experimenting with a hybrid category of machines that landed somewhere in between PDAs and full-size tablets. They were known as Ultra Mobile Personal Computers or UMPCs, which was a designation that Microsoft began to give to devices beginning in early 2000s. Originally known as Project Origami, these machines were designed to be lightweight, portable, just larger than pocket-sized computers that ran full-fledged Windows. And by early 2007, Samsung was already in the second generation of their UMPCs when they released the Q1 Ultra, which brought a handful of improvements over the original Q1 and came in a few different configurations. This one here is the Q1 Ultra XP, a business-focused model that sold for $1,149 and is notable for being the only launch model that shipped with XP Tablet PC Edition instead of Windows Vista Home Premium. However, Samsung did release some additional XP models later on after they realized that public perception of Vista wasn't entirely the greatest. And speaking of the price, the entry-level model was originally going to sell for $799, but Samsung did increase the price by $100 when these things were finally released, which was cheaper than its predecessor, the Q1, but you could still get a pretty capable laptop for that price. So you're really paying for the premium of ultra portability when you bought one of these things, which was that going to be worth it to you? Well, it depended on what you're going to use this thing for, but we're going to crack this open for the very first time since it was manufactured and see what it's all about. So let's break the seal. And there's no turning back now. So let's pop this open. We do have the getting started guide here. We've got the Q1 Ultra itself. Check that out. And we have, uh, I assume there's gonna be a bunch of accessories if we uh, open this up here. Oh, look at that. We get a whole accessories box within the box. So that's really nice. We'll set this down set the box aside. And uh, let's see what else we've got. So got some regulatory information, it looks like. Uh, your safety instruction uh, for your Samsung computer. And we just got a whole hodgepodge of stuff in here. So let's see, right here, we've got one end of the AC adapter. We've got the other end of it there. We've got what looks like a uh, USB data cable, okay. We've got uh, the battery, definitely important. We've got a strap. We've got a, what looks like a couple of discs. We have a system recovery media, Windows XP Tablet PC edition, and we have a system software media. So, you know, if you were going to restore this thing, the factory settings, you would need both of those. And it looks like we've got, um, this is advertising or talking about McAfee Security Center, new internet security solution. Obviously McAfee is the best of the best, as we all know. Um, I'm sure there's gonna be a few people that don't pick up on that sarcasm there. It's gonna be really funny to see those comments. Oh, it's just in a bunch of different languages. Somebody actually spent time to print 16 pages worth of McAfee information, which uh, I couldn't think of a worse use of paper even if I tried. Uh, so yeah, those are all the accessories. And here is the Q1 Ultra in all of its glory. Now, a couple of differences between this and the original Q1. Uh, first thing, the addition of physical keys. You see we've got a split keypad going on up here. Uh, this was not present on the original Q1, so you had to use the on-screen keyboard to type. Right here, you've got the uh, mouse uh, sort of joystick or uh, you know analog pad for moving the mouse cursor around. You've got some arrow keys over here, an enter button, and you've got left and right uh, buttons which correspond to you know the left and right buttons on the mouse. Uh, you also have, if we uh, take a look at the top of the device here, an SD card slot. Now the original Q1 had a CF card slot instead, so they kind of updated that here, which is nice. You've also got a USB port, headphone jack, and a shutter button, which corresponds to the front-facing webcam, which was also not present on the original Q1. You've also got a fingerprint reader down here, which makes sense with this being a business-focused model. These were pretty present on business laptops.
laptops from this time. And on the bottom here, you've got your designed for XP sticker. Now, the reason why I bring this up is because it's interesting. On the box, if we take a look at this sticker right here, which contains the specs and everything, it actually says the operating system is XP tablet plus Vista business. Underneath where the battery goes, there is a Windows Vista product sticker with a Vista product key. So I think what's going on here is, you know, this thing runs XP Tablet PC Edition, but you could have, I guess, contacted Samsung to get uh, recovery media for Windows Vista to, you know, upgrade it to that or just, you know, like an upgrade disk. Um, it's kind of like the Windows Vista Capable program, but I don't think this was officially a part of it. I believe Vista Capable was mainly for consumer machines um, where, you know, you would have a separate sticker that actually said Vista Capable printed on uh, this XP sticker here. All right, so we've got the thing booted in here to Windows XP and you can see that Samsung has unfortunately replaced the Bliss wallpaper with uh, their own custom one here which was you know pretty typical for OEMs but uh, I mean I, I do have a soft spot for Bliss personally I made a whole video about it but uh, but yeah so I, I figured what we do is just go through and uh, and see what it's like to use this thing go through some of the installed programs and then uh, we'll do you know something stupid because I mean we pretty much have to <laughs> We pretty much have to do something dumb in every single one of these videos. A uh, couple things of note. Number one, the battery in this thing is stone dead and does not hold a charge anymore. Uh, I know this because I tried charging the thing for an hour and it did not uh, increase by a single percentage point. Also, you can see that we have a stylus. I kind of forgot to mention this, but yes, they do include a stylus so you can touch the screen with it. But you can also use your finger just fine. I was doing it earlier and honestly, it works relatively well. I can open up my computer. Uh, well, I just said it works relatively well, except when it doesn't. Uh, that was probably on me there. I didn't really... Uh, touch exactly on my computer partition wise you see we actually have two partitions on here we've got the local disk and then we have this uh temporary partition which doesn't have anything on it though i do want to go to tools here and uh, see if there's any hidden files or anything and yeah these are just for recycle bin and system volume information so i don't know what this partition is for but it is on here but whatever you've got your main hard drive we've got uh 13.4 gigs of free space uh, this is a, uh, looks like a 20 gig hard drive. What size is this? This is, oh, okay. This is, because I was going to say on the box, it says there's a 60 gig hard drive in here. And I'm like, that's not, so <laughs> this temporary partition actually has 31.3 uh, gigabytes of free space. Yeah, that is interesting. I don't know when this was created and I don't know why it was not. Uh, I mean, I assume like, something it was here for temporary purposes and then it was supposed to be just deleted and merged back with the primary partition but that did not happen evidently uh so i might have to do that manually here in a moment uh but we have a 60 gig hard drive so that's the that's kind of the main thing there and uh, speaking of specifications, let's go ahead and open up system properties and I'll show you what else that we're working with. So we have one gigabyte of RAM and we have an Intel Atom A110 CPU running at 800 megahertz. Now in terms of third party applications and the bloatware, we've got a little bit of bloatware. I already mentioned we have McAfee installed, uh, but we don't actually have it installed because this right here is the installer. Uh, for McAfee Web Essentials, so you don't have to run through that if you don't want to. Uh, we do have a bunch of Samsung stuff. Uh, all of it is contained in this folder right here at the top of the All Programs list, but some of them are on the desktop as well. And most of these are pretty self-explanatory. We'll go through uh, some of the major ones here. So Easy Button Manager. Uh, this is also accessible by pressing this UDF button up here. This is how you modify uh, what these buttons over here do on the like arrow pad or the arrow keys here. So, you know, you can change and, and, and customize what these do. You can have different groups set. We'll hit OK and get out of that. And also speaking of up here, you see we have volume controls. Uh, so I can increase the volume and lower the volume. And then you have this menu. When you tap this, you get access to uh, the, basically all the device controls. So you can change uh, display settings if you had an external display plugged into the VGA port on the side. You got brightness, you got turning on and off the backlight. You can change the rotation if you want to hold the device at a different orientation. You've got sound etiquette mode, which is basically silent mode. It's an interesting name for it, but that's what that will do. Uh, you can turn off your uh, wireless adapter and you can see you've got your battery charged down here, which again is 0%. So yeah, I mean, that's nice. Just easy access to all these controls right from a single button. Uh, we'll go back into the start menu here. Um, so you've got the display manager. You've got the webcam program. Uh, there is a rear webcam. I did not mention that earlier. Uh, there is both a front facing and a rear uh, webcam, which is nice. So we can 
Uh, whoops, I don't want to do that. Uh, we want to change, I think this will change the camera. And there's the front camera. So yeah, it works, which is pretty awesome. We'll go ahead and just close out of that. And uh, yeah, so you got two cameras on this thing, super neat. And uh, next up, you've got your battery manager. Magic Doctor is like a, you know, health program of sorts. Uh, if we open this up, you know, it's, uh, you know, you can diagnose the system, uh, see if it can find any issues. Hopefully it won't on a, on a brand new device here, but you've got that included. You've got your network manager, uh, the recovery tool, Samsung update, user's guide. You've got a voice recorder and you have um, AV station, which is like an audio visual program, not an antivirus. I actually kind of thought that at first, but uh, yeah, so, you know, you can play music and, and all that stuff. There's also this button on the side. Uh, I believe it's right here that you can press to bring up AV Station in like its full screen uh, sort of cinematic mode here. Uh, and this you can, you know, just play like a movie or, you know, something like that, uh, go into photos um, and obviously won't have anything in here. But uh, yeah, so you got like a full screen tablet interface uh, for this program. So yeah, that's everything in the Samsung folder. We also have your standard set of Windows XP tablet PC programs that we've touched on many times before on this channel. <laughs> no pun intended there. And uh, yeah, we have TouchKit as well, which is basically the uh, configuration utility for the touch uh, controller itself. So uh, you see it shows the USB controller installed here, but if we go to settings, uh, you can make this really obnoxious, like having it beep on touch and beep on release and check this out. Oh yeah, isn't that super great? Uh, so we're gonna definitely get rid of that. Um, but yeah, so you got some settings, you can change uh, the mode that it's in, you know, click on touch, click on release, click on touch uh, without moving cursor, click on release without moving cursor. We'll just leave it in a uh, normal mode. And, you know, you got some tools uh, and, you know, some other various things in there. So, yeah, definitely a useful program to go into if you want to uh, make some modifications to how the touchscreen responds to your input. Something else of note in here is OmniPass. This is how you set up the uh, fingerprint scanner uh, to be able to, you know, log you in without having to type in your password. Interestingly enough, the, uh, the whole interface here is actually in like a Windows Vista style. So, uh, I've already done this. So, if I were to uh, log off here... Uh, we'll just go ahead and do that. You can see right up here, it'll prompt me to swipe my finger on the sensor. But I could have just tapped on my uh, on my user profile because I don't have a password on this account. And you can just literally log in, you know, and bypass the whole thing. It's meant to be like a substitute to your password. Um, but yeah, so you can go through the OmniTouch program to configure that, you know, if you wanted to, to set up multiple users and, and all of that. And I've been using the stylus this entire time, but why don't we try to uh, put that away and navigate around using the, uh, the, the, the circular pad here and um, the controls over here. It's honestly not as uh, intuitive, but, you know, you can definitely get around and, you know, you just have to be a little bit more precise with your movements. Um, because, you know, you want to like, especially when you're closing stuff, like you got to get right over here, right there to be able to hit the X. I definitely would prefer even using a stylus. I mean, I was able to navigate around just by touching the screen pretty well. I mean, you, you will probably encounter issues if you're trying to like close windows and stuff. I mean, just like you have to be, oh, wow, that actually works super well. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, again, it was designed for use with a stylus. And uh, if you're wondering, the on-screen keyboard can be accessed by just tapping this down here. You can do handwriting recognition if you want, or you can just swap over to the, uh, to the keyboard. And yeah, there it is. It does move the icons and kind of screws them up. Unfortunately, we can just uh, drag those <laughs> back into place. So yeah, I mean, honestly, like it's a pretty easy device to get the hang of. I mean, I've been able to, to interact with it just fine here really no issues at all it comes with a nice selection of software i do wish like mcafee and some of this other stuff wasn't on here uh, at least wasn't in the like i mean because mcafee starts up every time that you log in and it prompts you with like you want to install and you're like no so you would have to go in and like uninstall that but yeah overall i would be pretty pleased with this thing uh, though the only thing is like i wouldn't have bought this for 900 bucks back in the day and i don't really see most people doing that either maybe if you're a little bit more tech savvy maybe if you were a business user and wanted something in between a pocket PC 
slash smartphone and, uh, you know, like a full-fledged laptop or like a, you know, larger Windows tablet, this would make sense. Of course, the other thing was we were only a couple years away from the iPad and, and tablets just taking over that intermediary spot between a, a, a smartphone and a full-fledged like laptop computer. So, you know, these, these UMPCs just fell by the wayside as a result and the entire category was pretty much forgotten in a couple of years. But still, it's a neat device, neat to kind of think back on and uh, it would be really neat if we can get Half-Life running on this thing and see how well that, that performs. So I'm going to plug in an external uh, disk drive here, which you would have to use if you wanted to restore the thing, by the way, because again, this comes on a DVD. Uh, so we're just going to pop it into the top USB port. Very convenient how it's just right on the top there. And we'll set that aside. And this is just kind of something I, I've realized we do in like all these videos. I usually try to install Half-Life on whatever device that I'm uh, that I'm uh, messing around with. You did it with the eye opener. We did it with, well, I can't think of anything else, but we've definitely done it with other things in the past. I am definitely curious to see uh, if we can get this thing to be uh, comfortably playable. I mean, I, it's not going to have any problems running on this but you know like spec wise but i just mean like with the touch screen and with the you know controls trying to interact with the game i think i'm gonna try to remap these to like w s a and d oh boy there it is it really never gets old but you know what does get old honestly and i know some people are gonna be mad at me for saying this uh the black mesa transit system opening uh, I do think it is pretty iconic, but I feel like I've seen it like five times in the past month. Uh, so I'm just going to hit new game here. Uh, we'll do medium, sure. And I'm just going to walk away for a bit, let it run through this, and I'll come back uh, when uh, when we're, when we can actually like move around and uh, I can talk without having to uh, keep interrupting the voiceover. And speaking of interruptions, now's a better time than ever to talk more about today's video sponsor, Akamai Connected Cloud. You can probably tell from the name that they offer cloud computing services, including affordable Linux-based virtual machines that give you the tools you need to host a wide variety of projects and applications. And with the backing of Akamai's worldwide network of data centers, you'll have the infrastructure to scale and deploy your project with enterprise-level capabilities like Kubernetes, load balancers, and object storage. Plus, their predictable no-lock-in pricing means that you can start small and upgrade to a higher tier in the future if your needs increase. And they'd love to have you try them out. So as a thank you for watching this video, if you sign up for a new account by clicking my link below, you'll receive a 60-day $100 credit to give them a test drive for completely free. So whatever your hosting needs might be, go ahead and check them out. And huge thanks again to Akamai Connected Cloud for making this episode possible. Okay, so here we are off of the Black Mesa Transit system. And what you can do is just, you know, you've got WASD right up here, so you could just uh, use the circle pad as the mouse and then move around with that and use, uh, you know, your your left mouse button here to, to fire your uh, weapon um, when you get one eventually. Or, you know, swing the iconic crowbar, but yeah. So, what I was thinking is, you know, you could make... You could make... Actually, I don't really know how you would... Because... You could make this W, A, S, and D. The problem is then, well, I guess you could kind of do that, like, you know, move around like this and then, you know, use your left mouse button here and then use this to uh, move the camera around. Um, so let's maybe try that. Let me uh, alt tab out of this. Um, let's see, where's alt and where's tab, alt tab. Maybe. Oh, I think we have to hit, no, that should just work. Okay, I just hit escape. Can we alt tab here? Okay, let's just hit minimize. I don't know why alt tab is not working. It's kind of annoying, but yeah, okay, so we've minimized the game. So let me hit, oh, you know, I guess we could have just hit UDF here because <laughs> it would have brought this up. Um, so let's add a new one and we'll just call it user group 01 because I don't feel like changing the name. All right, that looks good. So now we'll hop back into Half-Life and we'll resume game. So now I can move around like this and then use this to control uh, the camera. Yeah, honestly, I feel like that just works a little better just from the, if I don't get stuck there, um, just although the camera does move kind of slow. I got to change the mouse sensitivity. Like it's super, um, I mean, like this panning is really slow. Uh, where's escape? There it is. <laughs> I'm like looking on the keyboard to try to find uh, all the... <laughs> All the keys. Okay, so let's do um, the controls, controls, 
uh, advanced controls. Okay, mouse sensitivity. All right, that's a little bit better. Though honestly, that's maybe a little bit too fast. <laughs> um, but at least for now, like just, I mean, I, I think I should go back and, and change this, make it a little bit slower, but um, honestly, I do like this better. Th this kind of feels more like I'm using a, like a game console, you know, although hitting E, yeah, I need to really change the mouse sensitivity. Okay. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> I just feel like, like half of your time playing the game is going to be just looking at the keyboard. Like where's E? Oh yeah, it's up here. <laughs> All right, this, this mouse sensitivity is driving me nuts. I'm gonna change this now. So yeah, I mean, it's definitely not the uh, most ideal way to play Half-Life. I say that every time that we play Half-Life on this channel. Um, but you could probably get around in it. It's just gonna be difficult. Like again, using the, you know, you have to kind of remap the uh, controls a little bit. Uh, but I mean, the system runs the game just fine and you could plug in a regular keyboard and mouse to this thing if you really wanted to. Uh, if you really wanted to like play Half-Life on like an airplane or something and this is all you had but you had a keyboard and mouse in your backpack for some reason, uh, you could <laughs> you could do that. Uh, but yeah, I just always like doing this. I think it's, it's rather fun um, because Half-Life is definitely one of my favorite games. Um, so yeah, there it is running on the Samsung Q1 Ultra and well, that's the Samsung Q1 Ultra. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up, get subscribed, all that good stuff. And if you really enjoyed this video and want to get early access to my future content, I do have a Patreon down below or you could become a channel member if you'd like. But either way, I just want to thank you all so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.